In this tutorial, we're going to learn about planes in VizPro. Planes are abstract flat surfaces defined by location and orientation. The plane category contains several options for creating planes. Other planes can be found in the analysis category, as we'll see later. In the first example, we'll see how to place any primitive shape or solid on a specified plane. In a new SketchUp file, open the Viz window. Choose Plane, Plane to add a plane node. A plane requires three types of input, a point, which is the plane's origin, and two vectors to define the plane's x and y axes. Add a point node and connect the point output to the plane origin. Using copy and paste, add a slider for each of the x, y, and z coordinates of the point. Keep the default range values. Now add a vector node and attach its output to the plane x-axis. Like with the point, add three sliders to determine the vector x, y, and z values. The range of these sliders should go from 0 to 1. We'll keep the default for the plane's y-axis. Move the point sliders to see the plane origin move. Move the X vector sliders to change the orientation of the plane. Now we'll place an object on this plane. Choose Primitive Box. Adjust the DX, DY, and DZ values to make the box small enough to see the plane. Connect the plane output to the plane of the box. When you move the sliders to adjust the plane, the box remains aligned to it. Try the same thing with a 2D shape, such as a circle. Like with the box, the circle aligns to the plane. In the second example, we'll recreate the model from the sample file called Adjacent Boxes. This model uses planes to position the two boxes so that they meet along a common face. Start with two box nodes. Add a slider for each box's x dimension. Keep the default dimensions for box 2, but change the z dimension of box 1 to make it taller. Add a plane node and a point node so that we can position the second box. Connect the plane output to the box plane, and set the point output as the plane origin. These boxes will meet along the face that's perpendicular to the x-axis. To position box 2 to meet box 1 along this face, the x-coordinate of the center of the second box should meet this criteria. Box 2 center x-coordinate equals box 1 x-dimension plus box 2 x-dimension, all divided by 2. To perform this calculation, we need two nodes from the math category. First, we need an add node for adding the box x dimensions together and a multiply node to divide this sum in half. Bring in the add node and connect the two sliders to the x and y values to be added together. Next, bring in the multiply node and connect the add output as the first value. The y value should be 0 0.5. The output should be equal to x divided by 2 and this value defines the x-coordinate of the point that defines the plane. Now we can move the sliders to see that no matter what happens to either box's x-dimension, they remain touching along the plane perpendicular to x. For the next example, we'll create a box that can move along a curve, like in the model called Tangent Plane. Start with a Tangent Plane node, which is found in the Analysis category. This type of plane is tangent to a curve. We'll use an ellipse as the curve, though it could be any other type of curve. We could also use a wire node if we wanted to combine multiple curves. Keep the default dimensions of 0.8 units in the x dimension and 0.2 in y. Connect the ellipse output to the tangent plane curve input. Curves in VizPro have a unique parameter, usually called t, 
that uniquely identifies the location on a curve. The range of t depends on the type of curve. For a circle or an ellipse, the range is 0 to 2 times pi, which we'll enter as 6.28. So add a slider for the t input with a range of 0 to 6.28. Move the slider to see how the tangent plane moves along the ellipse and changes its orientation so that the x direction is always tangent to the ellipse. Add a box node and make its dimension small enough to see the other objects. Keep the x dimension the longest. Connect the box to the tangent plane and move the slider to see how the box moves and aligns. For the last example, we'll place a cone on a cylinder surface, as shown in the model surface plane. The cone remains tangent to the cylinder at specific points along the cylinder. Start with a surface plane node, also found in the analysis category. This node creates a plane tangent to a surface at a specific location on the surface. We'll use a cylinder as the surface, though this could be any type of surface. Connect the cylinder output to the plane surface. The other type of input this plane needs is the UV coordinates. Whereas the ellipse we used before had the T parameter to set a location, surfaces have two location parameters, normally called U and V. A point node will be used to combine both U and V values into a single input. Connect the point output to the plane UV input. Connect sliders to the point x and y values. The ranges of the u and v parameters depend on the type of surface. The cylinder is based on a circle, and the t parameter for a circle is the same as for an ellipse. So for the u coordinate, set the range between 0 and 6.28. The cylinder is one unit high, so the range of the v-coordinate should be between 0 and 1. Move the sliders to see how the u-coordinate moves around the cylinder and v moves up and down. The surface plane remains tangent. Add a cone and connect the surface plane to the cone plane. Now the cone moves along with the plane and remains aligned to it.